دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الحمد لله You're watching Lifting the Fog Clearing the misconceptions and misunderstandings and misrepresentations about Islam and what it teaches I'm your host Yusuf Estes and for the next little bit in this segment I'd like for us to deal with the subject of Muhammad وسلم, peace be upon him what is the role of Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him in Islam first of all I'd like to mention that unlike other religions who have the progenitor as being the one that they worship for instance Buddhism worships Buddha Christianity worshiping Christ in Islam the person who is the fo in focus Muhammad here is not worshipped but rather the God of Muhammad is worshipped this is a very important aspect of Islam to know about this in Islam the understanding is that anything in the creation is not the creator and whatever is there that can be seen or heard or touched is something that can't be worshipped because it was created by the Creator. This means that there isn't anything that is acting as an intercessor for the Muslims. There's nothing that we can pray through to take our prayers to the Almighty. There's none that we turn to in repentance except the Almighty and we don't make any sacrifices for other than Him and at the same time we don't have a devotion to a double God or triple God or something like this. It is only worship for the one true God who is never like his creation and never in his creation. So Muslims do not worship Muhammad وسلم, although we constantly say about him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which means the peace and blessings be upon him. At the same time understand that we're saying God's peace be on him and God's blessings be upon him. If you understand that Muhammad is not God and he is not to be worshipped, then it's easier to understand that he's bringing a message from that God. Muhammad explains to us from the very beginning of his teaching that it is God that we have all of our worship for. The famous statement in Arabic that says, La ilaha illallah means that there is none that is a God or object of worship except the one true God Allah and all worship is due to him alone how could we make such a statement as this and then begin to try to worship Muhammad of course at this stage we would need to clarify what we mean by worship if you meant by worship that one that you bow down to that's pretty obvious when you put your head on the ground or you're you know praying to something but there are other things in worship as well when we have a devotion for something that in interrupts or interferes with our devotion to a law then that object or that thing becomes something of worship let me give you an example we know in Islam that it's wrong for people to drink alcohol they should not drink wine beer and these types of substance yet if that became something so important to a person that they would disobey Allah for their love or their devotion to the alcohol then you can see why this would be something really really bad anything that makes a person forget about Allah and think about the creation to have devotion for the creation or obedience to the creation then this is something not following the true teaching of Islam and this again is not what Muhammad taught to understand the meaning of correct worship is to understand what Muhammad peace be upon him was teaching let's do a little history on the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and then we can better understand when people come to us and say things like why do you worship Muhammad or how come you don't believe in the God of Abraham you believe in uh, Muhammad as being the God or something like this first thing we do is tell them thank you for asking us about our religion in our religion it's imperative we always tell the truth we can't lie 
we do, we can go to hell. <laughs> Additionally, that we have the proof. Everything about Islam is preserved, and we can look real easily to the books and the texts that are there, the manuscripts are still in existence. The work of memorizing the Quran and the Hadith, the teachings of Muhammad, has been going on for 1400 years. This is not something that's left to chance, to your imagination, or to feelings or emotions that you might come up with. It's well documented. So we know that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a real human being. He was born and he died. Both of these things are important to understand. Additionally, Muhammad ate food and he had to sleep. These are attributes of a human being. In another segment we talked about Jesus in Islam. Additionally, we mentioned that he also was born and he ate and he slept. These things are known about the creation, whereas the Creator doesn't have these types of characteristics. Now, Muhammad, peace be upon him, clarified the understanding of prophethood. So we know that he was a prophet. He claimed to be one, a messenger, a Rasul of Allah. Additionally, he taught us that all these prophets brought the same message, even Jesus. He did make a very good point, a clarification of the status of Jesus, that perhaps even the Christians would enjoy knowing. That is, that as Jesus was born, and then taken up by God, he's with God, he'll come back in the last days, and then, in the very end, he also will die. So this clarifies the understanding when it says in the Quran that about Jesus, that he says, peace be upon me the day I was born, the day I was raised up, and the day that I die. And they fall in that succession, which is logical. In this segment, clearing away this fog, removing the doubt that some people may have, we're talking about Muhammad specifically, peace be upon him, but also mentioning Jesus. Because these two are very important to us as Muslims. Some people might say, well, we don't understand why you have to talk about Jesus. Why don't you just talk about Muhammad? Well, understand this. We don't make up our religion. It's not up to us to decide what's in the Quran, nor is it up to us to decide who or how to worship. It's up to Allah, the Creator and the Sustainer. And this is what He has revealed. His last and final message, which comes to us via Muhammad, peace be upon him, is called the Quran. And this is how we know these things from Allah's Quran. I'd like to mention that we have other segments so that you can watch and learn more about all these different aspects. And we encourage you to do so, to check out this uh, whole series on lifting the fog. Because in this you'll be able to also understand more about what Quran is, what it means, and how it comes to Muhammad. But specifically in this segment, I want to talk about what we believe about Muhammad and what he believed and what he taught. Muhammad, peace be upon him, believed in Allah. He believed in the Day of Judgment. And he believed in Jesus, peace be upon him, as being the Messiah. These things are important. He also believed in the angels. He believed that the angels were made from light. This means that you can't see them. You don't see light. You only see what it reflects off of. Also, he believed in the books of Allah. This means not only the Quran, but the books before. Now, there's no book going to come after the Quran. It is being preserved by Allah until the last day. The previous books before that, every one of them were from God, according to the teaching of Muhammad, peace be upon him. In the Quran, Allah speaks to us about the Torah. The Torah is the law that came with Moses. But Allah also speaks about the suhuf, Ibrahima wa Musa. Suhuf is coming from a word in Arabic that means scripture or manuscript. These scrolls or manuscripts also were from God originally. As it was dictated to them, those prophets, by the angel Gabriel, the same angel who came to Muhammad, they recorded these things and then taught their people. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, believed in this. He believed in those original teachings, in those scrolls, manuscripts, that are coming through 
the angel Gabriel and then to these prophets. He explained to us that just as Abraham and Moses and David and Suleiman had their revelations, so did Jesus. The revelations that came with David and Suleiman are referred to as Zabur. We call them the Psalms. The revelation that come with uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, we call it the Injil or the Gospel, the good news for the human beings. We understand real clear from this that Muhammad is not bringing a new message. He's not making up the Quran. It is not something that he came up with on his own. But it's a continuum of all of the scripture. Another thing that Muhammad, peace be upon him, believed in was the resurrection. And this is important to understand. The resurrection is something that he preached that human beings, although they die, will be all brought back. There's some good news in this. All human beings will be brought back. This means not just the Muslims, but in fact, all of the Christians and the Jews and the Hindus, the Buddhists. Check this out. Even the atheists will be brought back, resurrected again on the day of resurrection. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is there really is a hell. There really is a paradise. That's more good news. But the bad news here is that not everybody being resurrected is going to go to paradise. Just to be resurrected isn't the big object. Because obviously that's for Allah to recreate all of us again as He did in the first place. The big job here for us is to try to get to go to paradise. So when we talk about Muhammad, peace be upon him, believing in the Akhir, or the afterlife, or the resurrection, Yamu Kiyama, which means to stand up again. And that's exactly what will happen. The people will be brought back. And all of this is being taught to us from Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a prophet. Not as a god, not as a son of a god, but rather a messenger, confirming the message that came in the past and presenting the last and the final message in the last revelation for us to see. Now, I want to take a break and then I want to come back in the next segment and continue understanding the role of Muhammad in Islam. Sallallahu wa sallam. My name is Sharif Tuni and this is brought to you from Huda TV. Um, in today's edition we'll be discussing about uh, the day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated the samawat with darkness, the firmament with darkness, and equated the earth with light. Why? Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen pillar? Everything is running, but the relationships are fixed. So that it would appear to people as if nothing is running, you see. We are destroying the, our environment with our own hands. And that's why the Quran says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون Bismillah, welcome back. You're watching Lifting the Fog, the misconceptions and misunderstanding about Islam. We're in a segment talking about the role of Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the prophet in Islam. We're specifically dealing with the issue of what is his job and what do we believe about him. We've already discussed that we don't really see Muhammad as being a god or a son of a god or having a relationship with God that makes him a partner with God, but rather a servant of God. Now he has a distinct name in Islam as being a Rasul, it's a title, and Abdihi, which means he is a servant of God. Abdullah means servant of Allah, and certainly Muhammad is this, and so are all of us really, servants and slaves of Almighty God. Having said that, Muhammad as a prophet, peace be upon him, had certain things that he taught us that are essential to have the correct aqidah or belief in Islam. One of those is to believe in the oneness of God, that he's unique, he has no partners, he's never like his creation. Another thing he taught us is how to worship God. Not by worshiping something in the creation, but worshiping God directly. This was one of the most important points that he insisted on when he taught us about what is the right belief and what human beings need to do. 
in the Quran 